Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 here to talk SEC basketball as the tournament starts today in Tampa. But first, Blake, we're not going to talk about that in this video because there's two huge off-court stories that broke yesterday. Uh, the first one completely out of the blue. We're almost five years after Will Wade's name has come up in a wiretap situation. Uh, everybody knows the story if you're watching the video what is going on? Why did this happen now? Let me just uh, start by saying this, and I almost brought out a prop for this um, <laughs> for this particular episode. I was going to just write on a sheet of paper three words, I don't care, because to <laughs> me, it is very clear at this point, why should I care more than this entire process, which to me has just been an absolute joke. Um, and look, if you want to disagree with me, that's fine. And, and again, as we always say, we're not here to to tell you what to think. Everyone will have different opinions, especially about this one. And and I get it. If you're not an LSU fan, I think I know what your opinion is of of this. But it's just like how long? I mean, I, I made the joke on Twitter yesterday. Okay, I said, "Here's my tweet," and I'm not laughing at my own tweet, but like I was just thinking, this was this was how I, you know, resolved this whole situation in my mind. I said in response to the LSU infractions news, here are some of the songs that top the Billboard music charts. When the FBI thing on college basketball first started, Tub Thumping by Chumbawamba, Higher by Creed, Hot in Here by Nelly, Gangsta's Paradise by Coolio. I mean, it's just like, how long has this thing been going on? Uh, and it's like 2017. It's 2022. If it took this long to get to this point, then clearly either A, it's not in that, it's not that important and we shouldn't care. If we should care, Explain to us why it took five years to get to this point. And please, no one give me the whole, well, it's an FBI thing and it takes it. I'm not buying it anymore. I can't. Like, I just can't buy it. Um, did did Will Wade do things that were against the rules? I mean. <laughs> uh, hard hard to say he didn't. You, you look at it for yourself. But at this point, five years later, does this occupy my mind to where I'm just I'm just waiting every single day, waiting for this and just, you know, let's let's go. All right. Let's bring out more FBI and NCAA infractions cases. No, I don't care anymore because it's just this is ridiculous that it's even gotten to this point. Um, you know, in, in, on a serious note, could Will Wade lose his job? Yes, he could. Is it going to happen? I have no idea because let's remember, this is just the notification of the infractions, which means what, Chris? We got months and probably a year to go on this entire situation. Unless, again, LSU decides they want to terminate with cause. That could happen quicker. But if they don't, this thing's going to go on for another year, probably. I, I don't, I'm sorry. And again, I know everyone's not, they're going to say, well, you know, it's your job to, to cover this. And, and I understand, but... I just I don't care anymore about this. This is just you, you talked about songs. This happened so long ago. Phil Collins wrote a song about it. <laughs> Which, if we had music royalty, we would absolutely be playing yeah. in the background right now. I mean, wasn't yeah. that the urban legend that he heard about the Will Wade <laughs> situation, oh. and he was a college basketball fan? He said, "I'm just I'm done with it. I'm over it. I don't care anymore." I I'm just and look I I, I say this out of respect for everyone else who who will look at it and say, well, you know, our coach should do this thing. And and that's what I mean. Like, it's okay, yes. And it's it's one of those where I respect that. Like, it's everyone wants to be on the same playing field, right? Like, we, if you're another team in the SEC, you don't want to, you know, you're like, okay, well, this isn't fair. Like, we don't we don't want to have to deal with this. And, um, you know, we shouldn't be at a, a competitive disadvantage over things like this, you know? And I think it's, but, but, but to me, like I said, um, it's one of those things where does it doesn't it seem like this stuff just happens around tournament time over the past couple of years. Who else just, has been popped at this time? I have again, I have no idea because I, it's been so long that I don't remember. I mean, it's like I don't know. Like when's the last time that when was Rick Pitino coaching at Kentucky? Was that last year? Or, oh wait, no, that was that was the mid nineties. Um, you know, it's like that's how long ago it feels. Where I'm just like. I have no idea when all this stuff started. So, by the way, that was not a shot at Patino for cheating. That was just, 
I'm thinking like, oh, was that the mid '90s? Is that when this whole thing started? I have no idea. So did did you read uh, their or listen to the Merrill Code interview with Pat Forty on their podcast? No, it was I did it was not. terrific. First of all, but and there was an article that came out of it. You can Google it pretty easily. I mean, the claim was, if you're a big time program, your coach was doing it too, and that's just kind of where we are. I don't know what to do with it either. That's the thing. It's not our job to know what to do with it. <laughs> You know, it's like the people's jobs, who's it, who's it is to know what to do. Well, that was a sentence. Um, the people who are supposed to know what to do with this stuff, I don't think know what to do with this stuff. <laughs> so it's like, what what do I even say about that? Do, so, do you know what it reminds me of? I, I think everybody knows baseball is my favorite sport. Yeah. And I used to be big into the Hall of Fame. Used to just sit there waiting when the – Election results came out, used to get into arguments with people about it and criticize selections or praise selections. And now it's just the point, like, I don't even know anymore. You had the steroid thing where you know some people that were doing it for sure. There's some people that were doing it but that you don't know, but you're pretty sure we're doing it. And there's a host of people out there that you don't think we're doing it. But you don't know because everybody seemed to be doing PEDs. And I feel like that's exactly where we are with college basketball. And it's affected my love for my favorite sport. And I think it's done the same thing to college basketball. Chris, did you read the article on the LSU receives a notice of allegations? Did, did you read? I'm sure you did. You read it. I, I browsed it. Yeah. Is there anything anything in there that's new? No, and, and that's why I say I browsed it. I kept looking Nothing. for, like, some smoking gun, some reason that this happened yesterday, some explanation to make some sense of why it came out when it did, and I found nothing. Listen, and I'm going to be honest with you. Again, we, we know there's a lot of fan bases that watch our stuff now. You could replace, and remember, this is just not us. Like, I, I know some of us have been accused from being, from being fans for different schools in the SEC, but... As we've said, we, we are neutral. You could replace LSU's name with any name in the in the conference, and I would be saying the exact same thing right now. I don't care who it is. It's just, at this point, the only thing new we learned from what came out yesterday is that they have received a notice of allegations, which we knew was going to happen at some point. We just didn't know it was going to happen five years later. So, I, I don't know. I mean... Really, I feel like everything we're still leaning on is the the documentary, right? Yeah. What was that? Was it was that 2019? I, no, it was. It was, wasn't it? It was 2019. You're about when this came out? No, when the the documentary, the um, what's his name? Um, God, what's the guy's name? Oh, uh, why am I Christian Dawkins? Yes. Wasn't that? Didn't that documentary come out in like? I don't three years remember. ago. Let me find that real quick. I don't want to get that inaccurate here. While you're doing that, we got a new sponsor. I want to tell you about them. Uh, you can wager on sports and win NFTs without risking any money. Sounds good to be too good to be true, but it's not. Stakes is the wagering app that casual social. Uh, that's excuse me. That's casual social and made for all sports fans. Whether it's by yourself or with friends, experience the thrill of sports betting without needing to worry about losing your hard-earned money. Sign up and use the code Southeastern14 to join the thousands of other sports fans playing with stakes. Again, stakes, good app. Going to be a partner of ours, and they got some cool stuff on there. We'll be putting up some polls, some questions, and things. So be sure to go on there. Use that promo code. That helps us out. And I think you're going to like what they do. All right. The scheme, that was the documentary, came out okay. two years ago, March 31st. Again, two years. I just let us know what you think in the comments. I'm curious what people think because, again, I I, I know what non LSU fans, a lot of people are going to think. Like they, you, said, you said March of 2019? 2020. Oh, okay. 2020. March 31st, 2020. So almost two okay, years ago. Almost this two documentary years. came out. Everything for everyone to, to hear and, but. I just, we'll see what happens. Again, let us know what you think in the comments. I, I know, look, I, I doubt Will Wade's, you know, made a lot of friends with opposing fan bases because there's probably a lot of people who want to to see him ousted. Um, but I just, like I said, this is not our jobs to 
to figure out what's next when it comes to the NCAA doing their job, which is, let's be honest. Which it hasn't been um, doing for a while. So th- there's no, I have nothing further to add on this. And again, it's not me turning a blind eye to this. It's why should I care if <laughs> the people who are governing the whole scenario have taken this long to do things that people think they should do. Tom Crean, let's talk Tom Crean. Reports came out yesterday that people believe he's going to be out of a job. It sounds like the timing is just about the buyout, which I think drops by about, what, half or more as soon as his season is done. Yeah, and again, these are – these are reports, not our reports. I want to make that clear. Um, but, I mean, let's be honest. Anyone who's watched the SEC this year, we know the route this is going to take, and I think it just becomes a matter of what's next, right? Because um, I've said it all year, you just can't go 1-17 in, in, what, year four in the league. You know, you just – it's it's you're not going to be able to do that. Um, so, I, I – no surprise if that is what winds up happening. Of course, they'll play Vanderbilt tonight in the first round. If they win, does that change anything? No. Um, so I just I don't think so. But um, the the whole Crean thing, I, I said at the time, I, I thought it was like it seemed like a decent hire. I, I can't look back and just act like I knew this was going to happen. Um, and I know a lot of people. Some people are higher on Crean than others. I thought the job he did at Indiana was underrated because of what he stepped mm-hmm. into there. If you don't remember what he stepped into there, complete mess. I mean, just mess on every level. Um, and so, but as we always say, sometimes some jobs work better than others. I thought this one may work because there's less pressure than you would have had at Indiana, but it just hasn't worked. And so, um, yeah, if they make that move, then obviously I don't think it will surprise anyone just based on you know, where, where they're at right now. And I just think that it's, yeah, it's Georgia can be a job where you can win, but I think history would say that it is a tough place to win. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's probably the best way to put it. Yes. You've got the resources recruiting base is terrific, but it's proven to be a job that it's, it's not easy. Uh, to, to win there. And, you know, where would that's a discussion, I guess we, we could have. Um, and we won't, we're not going to go too far. And this is sort of your, your morning news dump here. It's just kind of a, you know, just two big stories heading into the tournament, but I think it's a matter of where do you, where, where would you put the, the Georgia job in the SD ranks? I think that's the, that's an interesting discussion worth having. Um, yeah. I mean, I think for the right person, it could be a good job because you, you don't have the pressure. You've got Atlanta, not too far away. Um, you know, the, the league the league is starting to become like it is in baseball in a way, I think. That, like, just by having an SEC baseball program, like unless maybe you're Missouri, that sort of gives you a little bit more chance with recruits and things. I mean, that's probably premature because the SEC has been a lead in baseball for a lot longer than it's been at the level it is this year in basketball. This is still a newish kind of thing, but I, I think it has that potential. I mean, the SEC, if it decides it was – it wants to win in something, it generally does. Um, let me ask you, names that are going to come up, I think Dennis Gates of Cleveland State, Andy Kennedy it. at UAB, who was at Ole Miss before. Uh, Jonas Hayes' name has popped up. He's an assistant at Xavier, yep. or Xavier, as my son calls it, <laughs> uh, who played at Georgia under Jim Herrick, transferred, I think, from Western Carolina. He and his brother Jarvis. But I'm sure there's more names. You're you don't even blink when I ask you. Dennis Gates is the guy that you'd take. I listen. Uh, some people have accused me of being Dennis Gates's agent. I am not. But I am just telling you personal dealings. I have talked to to Dennis Gates for the stuff we do for Blue Ribbon, and it, it's it's kind of a full circle thing because when you think about it, I talked to Dennis Gates two years ago, and if you want to know Dennis Gates' background, he's former. Um, assistant for Leonard Hamilton at Florida State for a while. But Dennis Gates took over at Cleveland State. And you know who he took over for, Chris? Dennis Felton. Dennis Felton, who, of course, former Georgia coach. And do you want to know what he took over, Chris? A complete 
mess yeah, of a program. They had player unhappiness and oh, I mean, it was bad. Like this was, and we talked about Tom Green taking over a bad scenario. Like this is one of those. Like it really would be like ironic if you talk about sort of scenarios and how it's played out. But he took over a program there, and Dennis Gates, I think, is like forty-two. I want to say is, is how old he is. First year there, he wins eleven games, and I promise you, like that was a miracle in and of itself for them to win that many games. Two years later, they went 16-4 and four in the Horizon League last year, get to the NCAA tournament. This year, they win the Horizon, Re- Horizon League regular season. Now, they lost in the tournament. Of course, Wright State, we saw, wound up uh, winning that bid last night. But anyone, I think, out there should take a look at Dennis Hayes. Excuse me, Dennis Hayes. <laughs> I'm combining Dennis. the two together. Dennis Gates um, as one. That is one I would keep on my list if I'm Georgia – I just think he's the next big thing, and there's a lot of reputable coaches I've talked to that think the exact same thing. Um, but Hayes is someone too that I think if you if you want to embrace the 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 tradition and and someone who knows and has been there before, I think that's certainly someone you give a look to uh, because again, he is he's 40 years old, young guy. I think he would be exactly what you would want recruiting wise. He understands the area. He's from Atlanta, um, so I think to me. Those are two guys to keep an eye on. Beyond that, as we always say, anything can happen, right? I mean, there's just there's so many dominoes when it comes to the coaching carousel. Uh, but we'll get more into that once you know things, if they are made official, and Crean is is let go, then then we'll talk more about that. But if you're a Georgia fan out there, you're you're looking ahead, you're thinking, okay, we think this is what we're gonna do. Those are two names I would I would have on my list. So. Let me tell you how high Blake is on this guy. We talked about this yesterday off podcast. Blake, you basically – tell me if I'm getting your words wrong here. You basically said, I don't care who the school is Yeah. in the SEC. If they had a vacancy, I'd, I'd say Dennis Gates. Don't care. I think you should at least get an interview. It would not matter what the job is. I, I just think he is one of the most impressive guys I've, I've talked to in this profession. And remember, I've only, like, I've only talked to him several times. Like, I don't talk to him all the time or anything. But in the times I talk to him, this guy, he has it – like the it factor, like that is one of those things that you know it when you when you see it or hear it. He's got it, and I think he would be fantastic. He was he's from Chicago. There's a lot of also think about this full circle too. There are a lot of people who want him to go to Cal. Who's the coach at Cal, Chris? Mark, Mark Fox. Fox. It's all like the universe is putting it all together. How do we here, get? So. How do we put Jim Herrick in here? There's got to be a way. There's got to be a no Jim Herrick. No, no, no. We, I, you know, we have our Jim Herrick connection, Jonas Hayes. I mean, this is like, this is something, man. So m- maybe it all comes together. We'll see. But um, yeah, that, those are some things to think about. And um, I know we got to hop off here for this one. But our SEC tournament predictions, pick by pick, we're picking every game. It's coming up soon. So get ready. We should change the name on the graphic underneath your face to Honey Badger. Yeah, let's do it. You don't you don't care about Will Wade. You don't care who's got an opening. It should be Dennis Gates. You just don't care. <laughs> don't care, man. Just don't care. We got to get the license to that music. <laughs> I'll leave that to come you. Come in, come in with the drum solo. I'll leave it to you. Yeah, I, we could do some stuff with music, man. If we had a license, we could do all kinds. <laughs> no, that mean then we have to figure out how to get it on air. Yeah, which I think true. has been well documented. We're not. It's not great. We're not the best at text, guys. Let us know what you think in the comments on these two things. We'll be back with um, our our the one you've been waiting for, our predictions. We we gotta we gotta make picks. There's no fence sitting. I think everybody's just sitting and waiting, going, "What are these guys going to do on Ole Miss in Missouri? What are these guys thinking about?" I mean, I I think people are just sitting on that like crazy. It's coming. It's coming. We'll see you soon.